In this video, I want to share the little hacks, the little things that are making an enormous difference to me right now. Um, and I share this, to be honest, because it's taken so long to figure them out. And I'm hoping that somebody watching on might perhaps take a little pearl of wisdom from this and it might compliment you as much of it as it's complimented me. So the very first thing that I, uh, yeah, that I would really tune into in terms of bringing me the most value is a daily journaling practice. Um, I feel like a broken record as I share this, but it, it is fantastic. And I think it's important to know what does that look like? What it looks like is it just literally on a piece of paper every day with a pen, just asking yourself how you are and putting a bit of, a, a bit of pen to whatever thoughts are coming up in your head, whatever thoughts might be distracting you. Um, I find so often that there's so much in our heads, but what's so interesting for me is once I just give them a little bit of thought, once I just even write them out, they go. And that really helps me calm my mind. But the exercise of journaling as well make, brings me into a much more uh, present state of mind where I actually am much more conscious of, okay, this is where I am. Um, I find sometimes when circumstances are a bit challenging and you know we're doing loads of things that we aren't checking in with ourselves as much as we should and sometimes we can get lost on autopilot where this exercise of journaling and this exercise of feeling where you're at gets you grounded, gets you present, gets you focused and puts you much more in the driving seat of your life which is fantastic. So journaling would be my number one. When it comes to number two it is a consciousness of the impact of our diets. It sounds really like simple. We all know, we all are conscious of our diets. But I figured out three pretty, pretty fascinating things, I think, for me. You might find them a laugh. But the first one was that I found that drink, although fun, whatever I have it and whatnot, threw me all over the place um, emotionally. And but also much more in terms of it threw my kind of my my presence let's say all over the place so i would be feeling things that weren't true a couple of days later um i i it changed the way i engaged with the world and i suppose the easiest way of, of explaining it is that i can recognize the things that work for me and the things that don't and i can follow that path but when i when I drink over the coming week, the things that worked for me before sometimes don't. Some things that don't work for, work for me, I'm leaning on. And what I found is that the impact of drinking was really disorientating in just my kind of, my presence, my groundedness, my emotional stability. So I knocked out drink and bang, suddenly I was feeling much, much more grounded. What I realized pretty quickly thereafter was every time I was having processed sugar, I was feeling depressed. And that, that was amazing. Like, okay, so if I have a, a like a, yeah, a bit, of, a bit of sugar, a bit of like you know, sugar sprinkled on a dish or a, or a bit of chocolate with too much sugar in it or something like that, within a couple of hours, my thoughts were really negative. And anyway, I looked this up. Yeah, sugar, if you're a little bit intolerant, can bring up uh, feelings of depression. So I knocked out sugar. And my feelings of depression, say, for whatever level I had, let's say they were 100%, suddenly I was sitting at about 10%. The, the fall off in negative, depressive feelings was enormous. And the third little kind of thing that I came, came from with my diet was I, uh, I noticed uh, after I ate a pasta dish one night that I went to bed with a load of anxiety and I woke up with a load of anxiety. And my journaling practice really helped me recognize this. So I didn't have any pasta or bread or anything like that, but for a few days, and anxiety went. And then when I did it again, bang, it shot right up. And I have read into this, and I figured out that actually a, little, a low level of gluten intolerance can deliver um, anxiety. And I, I shared the journaling practice first because you know, that actually helps me really get present and get a read of what's working for me and what's not. I then shared the, shared the drinking because it kind of throws you all over the place, but you cut it out. And little pearls of wisdom started to come to me, come to me like dominoes. I've recognized uh, sugar makes me depressed. I recognize that gluten makes me anxious. And when I figured that out, I was like, 
I feel like a different self altogether. So the third big thing that I want to talk about is my phone, my phone usage. So I don't think I, it's unfair to say that many of us are slaves to our phones. And I discovered a, a intermittent fasting a few years ago. It was fantastic. I decided, you know what, I'm going to apply the same method to my use of my phone. And, and so what I did was I, I decided, right, I'm not going to use my phone before 12 p.m. And I won't use it after, uh, after well, it's probably about 10 p.m. So it's not the exact intermittent fasting kind of timelines, but it's pretty good. I was motivated to trial this off the back of like, wow, journaling's working really well, drinks not, you know, that's working really well, sugar's working really well, gluten's working really well, let's see this. It was harder than all of them. It was so hard. I was amazed at how many, how much, how, how much emotion came up of like, you need to look at your phone. And I was amazed at how, almost unconsciously how many times I reached for my phone. Over the coming days, so like let's say within two or three days, what I noticed was that when I didn't use my phone before 12 p.m., I was so much more present. I was so much more relaxed. I was so much more calm. And I was so much more productive. As I was undistracted. I was uninterrupted. Um, there were, you know, little hiccups in the process. And so I would look at my phone at 10, p 10 a.m. or something. And all this, like, distraction would come up and emotions would run all over the place. And what's lovely about that is, you know, sometimes we make mistakes and they further the learnings all the more. Those mistakes really solidified, wow, I am actually, I'm going to put my phone away before 12 p.m. And I'm not going to look at, look at it after 10. It has been a game changer in terms of just upping my level of presence, productivity, emotional stability. And it's, yeah, it's brought, it's brought so, so much value. The fourth one was, and it's funny, as I said, these literally fell like dominoes was this recognition of like, I need to prioritize my sleep better. Um, so I, I'm pretty much in bed every day by 10 o'clock. Um, whether it's a weekend or not, I kind of follow this, this, this constant. Um, and for sleep cycles, that really, really works, that we have a constant approach. So I go to bed at 10, and I'm pretty much every, up every morning at 6 o'clock. And... What I found is that this disciplined approach to sleeping times is allowing me to sleep better, is allowing me to wake up naturally before an alarm clock or anything like that. I always set an alarm clock as a safety at 6.30, but I'm up way before it. And it's brought like a, like a calm, but also a real pride of being up early, of being out, of being active. And I, kind of, I come to 10 a.m. and it feels like I've done so much, especially without the distraction of my phone. Um, and it's changed an enormous amount for me. As I said, I, I really, I love Tony Robbins' book, Unleash the Power Within and uh, Awaken the Giant Within, sorry. And for me, when I think of like, I think about life, generally speaking, it's like everything is pulling us off our strongest self. And to, to realize that strength within us, to re realize that leadership, it, it, we actually have to be quite rebellious. We have to do things that, you know, really don't seem normal. Um, I, you know, like not eating sugar in today's world is just mad. Not eating gluten is, that's a lot. Um, really being strict with your use of a phone, that's quite a lot. Um, but it's, it's, it's been really impacting. Um, now, in talking about the sleep thing, a really interesting thing came up. I noticed uh, one or two of the nights I watched a movie at about eight o'clock. And it threw my sleep all over the place. And so what I've realized is actually watching TV before going to bed doesn't serve me at all. It throws my head and actually throws my dreams off course completely. I, I, dreams I find are incredibly therapeutic. And this comes up a lot. If you study, if you study dreaming, I haven't done mad study in college or anything. I've read a few books on it. And what I find is really interesting is dreams are actually like a self-therapy. We live through certain scenarios in our dreams and it helps us calm. It helps us process certain emotions. It helps us grow and develop. But those dreams can be very easily hijacked. If we read a book before we go to bed, if we watch a movie before we go to bed, we're not doing, having the dreams that we should. We're having dreams influenced by the movie or the book. And what I found is that, yeah, not watching TV before I go to bed and going to bed at a set time has changed the way I sleep, has, ha has got me bouncing out of bed in the mornings and brought a level of like productivity and energy that is 
just incredible. Now my fifth point, and it's my last point, I could actually, I feel bad, I could go on and on and on in this, but I really, I wanted to touch on this one as a last point, and maybe I'll do another one of these in a little while, was that as I, as I you know, really zoned into my journaling practice and got grounded, and then I recognized the kind of the dietary things that were working for me and not, that was really useful. When I recognized like that I'm essentially quite enslaved by my phone, then I realized, you know, I want to prioritize rest and, and how can I do that best? A very kind of interesting theme just came up for me of like recognizing that there's this quote that's coming up now, it's Jim Rohn, if you do what is hard, your life will be easy. If you do what is easy, your life will be hard. And it's this recognition of the freedom that comes on the other side of discipline. The recognition, let's say dietary wise, that we are all, we're all eating our desires. We're all quite impulsively eating. But instead, when we look at our diets functionally, let's say, not indulgently, but functionally, suddenly all these issues that we have, a lot of them go. And we start to feel fantastic when we're eating functionally, not impulsively. And when we're going about our days and we're not getting hijacked by our desires, but instead we're applying a level of discipline. We're recognizing what will serve us in the long run versus the momentary pleasure or the momentary excitement. And it's, it's really lit up this level of curiosity for me of, wow, a whole load of my desires don't serve me. A whole load of my impulsive thoughts don't serve me. And in actual fact, what I'm finding is incredible is discipline. And I'm, I'm finding incredible the level of, yeah, the level of pleasure, the level of fulfillment, the level of excitement, the level of energy that comes and freedom that comes from the discipline. And yeah, those kind of, that, that mindset shift for me is making whatever challenging decisions I might be making so much easier. And, and in actual fact is really inviting them in. So anyway, I share this video. I always share these videos, really the same presence, I, premise. I love the idea that I could perhaps share a lesson that I'm learning or a value that I'm taking. And somebody else watching on might take something from it that would complement them on their journey. And I always think that's the really nice thing that we can do as humans. We can share our learnings. We can share our experiences and others can benefit. And we can essentially get this, this, yeah, this, this compounding effect of the, of the lessons that we learn and this compounding kind of domino out good effect. So in sharing this, I, uh, you probably get an insight into uh, the uh, perhaps OTT nature that which I applied to life, but I love it. I, I get a lot of joy out of this stuff. And hopefully in watching this, there's something that you can take, some level of wisdom, some, some, yeah, some level of wisdom, some little bit of insight, some inspiration to do something a little bit differently for yourself that might bring some real good for you. If it does, let me know in the comments below um, and I'd, I'd love to hear your feedback on this. This video is a little bit less, uh, you know, less presented and more, more vulnerable, to be completely honest. So I'd love to hear your feedback. Um, and I will, yeah, I look forward to continuing sharing in future videos and hope this serves you well for now.